want to talk through now these sight singing examples that we did for homework one. So if you'll pull those out, that's what we're going to look at first. And so we already did number 16, which was an example of a parallel period. It had the inflected half cadence at the end of the antecedent phrase, and then authentic cadence um, for the conclusion of the consequent phrase. So that's a real clear um, example of a parallel period. Number 17 is one that um, has an extension in the second phrase. So again, this is two phrases in length. The first phrase is regular, and it has repeats around it, so that would be just A, A prime. Um, no, just A, sorry about that. So we've got that, a repeated phrase. And then Stein would call this A for this beginning of the, of the second phrase, the consequent phrase. But this has an extension there in the third and fourth measures of this. And it's extended because it, you have a sequence, the first semi-phrase, the first two measures of that second line are sequenced in the third and fourth, and then you have a final two measures, and so that equals a parallel period. And So, in that second phrase, the third and fourth measures sequence up by step the first and second measures of that second phrase. One other term that's used later in the book is the term musical rhyme. And that's when the ending of two phrases is parallel. So you can see how the last two measures of the antecedent phrase are very, you know, parallel to the last two measures of the consequent phrase. So So that doesn't really change anything as far as the terminology for the phrase construction, but that's just another term that denotes that situation where the endings are parallel. In, in this case, both the beginning and the ending of each phrase is parallel. All right, number 18 has double bars and repeats. And so this one happens to be slurred in four measure phrase length. So you have an opening phrase, A, that then has a second phrase that's parallel. So that would be A prime. And then that is repeated. And then you're going to have double bars and repeats for first and second ending on the third and fourth phrases. So first ending then compared to the second ending is going to make that a B prime. And so um, this is one that is That's the basis, you know, the basic idea there. And so you're comparing again first and third phrases to determine 
that this is contrasting and four phrases equals double period. All right, number 19, this uh, little melody from Brahms also has an extension in it. So four measure phrase lengths. This is one that Stein would call uh, parallel because the first full measure is parallel to the first full measure of the um, consequent phrase. So it starts out with a four measure phrase that's uh, very regular, but then you have a six measure phrase that has an extension in the middle. And this time the extension has to do with the rhythm that is sequenced. So the melody isn't exactly sequenced, but you definitely, when you hear this, it has that uh, rhythm that, that is sequenced. And then you have a final two measures. So uh, again, Stein would call this a parallel period. So a four measure phrase and then a six measure phrase. Um, it may, maybe Ben would call that contrasting period, but again, I'm not going to grade you on parallel and contrasting as far as you know a difference of opinion on that at that level. But you, you just want to use these terms consistently. So if you put here for assigning letter names A, A prime, then you have to put parallel period. If you put A, B, then you would put contrasting period. I will grade that. Yeah, that has to be consistent. All right, number 20 then is one that is an allegretto tempo, it's in 3-4, so you want to look at this in four measure phrase lengths, and it is slurred in semi-phrases. So we have two phrases, real clearly the beginning of the antecedent is contrasting to the beginning of the consequent, therefore this would be a contrasting period. So this is one like what I would give you on the quiz, one that is um, very straightforward and I'm going to try to give you one, you know, ones that aren't, you know, controversial or don't, you know, where there'd be matter of opinion on things. All right, number 21. This also is two phrases. So the opening phrase in F sharp major um, that is uh, the first four measures. And then um, you have a second phrase that begins with the pickup to the second line. And in that consequent phrase, the third and fourth measures are a repetition of the um, beginning of that consequent phrase. So that would be viewed as an extension with a final two measure semi-phrase. So again, this is one that has an extra measure in it, and that extra measure is gonna be the extension where you have repetition in that uh, second phrase, the consequent phrase. So that would be a contrasting period. All right, then number 22, is one that is, um, this one, you know, there could be a difference of opinion on it. First phrase is clear, four measures, that's repeated, so. But then the second um, line has six measures. It's grouped into two three-measure units. It's an andante tempo, which, you know, is a more moderate tempo. Um, and you could look at these as irregular phrase lengths and have two three-measure phrases. However, if you looked at it as uh, being a, a six-measure phrase, it's a little bit more difficult to look at it that way because you don't, it's not clear where the extension would occur. It's really like the, uh, you know, the, the pattern that is repeated is the three-measure unit. So anyway, this is one, I won't give you one like this in the quiz, but at any rate, that's one which is, um, probably it's going to, you're going to look at that as a phrase group. It's A, B, B prime. All right, I said not to look at 23. That's a, you know, a phrase, five measure phrase. Um, then number 24 is one that um, it looks like it could be a uh, contrasting period. Uh, with a 
you know, an extension at the end, a two measure extension. So the first four measures is clearly a phrase. Um, and then a similar rhythm, but it, it, the last note goes in a different direction on the consequent phrase, which then would yield contrasting, you know, as far as just the terminology of comparing the beginnings of, of the two phrases. And again, you don't want to call that last, you know, uh, two measures being a separate phrase, because you can't do that. You call that a semi-phrase, and that's going to be, that's where the extension will occur. Uh, but this is one where if you looked at the beginning of the first, uh, you know, the, the beginning of, of, the, of the first of the consequent phrase, and compare that to the end of the antecedent phrase, then that is parallel. So I think I would use the term modified parallel period for number 24. And so, yeah, again, that's one. I'll, if I'm going to pick one like that, you know, I'll, I'll give one that's, what, you know, more clear and not, doesn't have anything that's ambiguous about it. All right, number 25 is one that is uh, going to be a four-phrase unit. So the phrase construction uh, is one that is A, then B, and then A prime, and then A double prime. So that would equal a parallel double period. So, you, you know, probably that's going to be the best way to look at it. You might have thought that was contrasting there with the third phrase and the first phrase, but I don't think so. I think that's going to be even better to say that that's going to be. All right, number 30 then is one where this one's trickier in that it looks like it's four phrases, but this, the third four measure idea is an exact repetition of the second four measure idea. And so if you picked up on that, then that would be A, B, repetition of B, and then C, that would yield a phrase group. So that's one where I would, you know, I could give you something like that. I'll be looking to see that you pick up on the fact that, um, you know, that third group of four measures is an exact repetition of the second phrase, that, that second group of four measures. Okay, number 31 is an example of three phrases. You have A and then B. And then the last four measures is very similar. I think you probably want to call this a phrase group, but some have said, well, it's so close, you know, it's just the final you know, ending of that, it, it functions like a three-part period. Um, you know, if you're going real strict by the definitions of what we talked about, probably, you know, I'm going to say um, that it's a phrase group, A, B, A prime. But if you said, you know, you can make a case for a three-part period. There's going to be one a little bit later on that uh, is a three-part period that uh, would be controversial. All right, number 32 then is one that has three phrases. So this is one uh, by Bartok. Uh, you know, he's very much uh, geared toward uh, folk music and uh, Hungarian, Bulgarian dance rhythms, which didn't always follow regular uh, phrase lengths. This one is not regular in the phrasing, so um, you have a three measure phrase, and then you have a three and a half measure phrase, and then you have another three measure phrase. They're all, um, the, the first two you probably could say A, A prime. The last one would be B. So this one's, you know, a, a phrase group, but yeah, I wouldn't give you one like this on the test, but it's gonna be able to talk through ones that are, you know, ambiguous, just to be able to kind of talk about how to use the terms and uh, kind of what the parameters are. Number 33 is one that would be uh, clearly a parallel period. And so that's uh, two phrases. They're 
uh, first measure of each is parallel, so that would be uh, a, a prime. And then number 114, this is another one that is very clear. So this has three four measure phrases, and these are all contrasting, so it would be A, B, C, as far as designating each phrase with a small case letter, and therefore it would be a phrase group. Okay, number 115, <clears throat> this one is a fast tempo, anime is a fast, quick tempo. It's a French piece. And this is one that, if I gave it to you, what I'm gonna do on this quiz is just to go ahead and designate, view these in four measure phrase lengths. Or if I have one like this, I would say, if you view this in six measure phrase lengths, then what would the phrase construction be? And so, if you're looking at six measure phrases in this, which you could justify because of the meter and the tempo, then you have a phrase that is concluded there at the double bars with repeats, so that's repeated. And then you have a second phrase that begins after the double bars, so uh, that is one that's parallel, so that's, you know, A and then A prime. Uh, but at the end of that second phrase, it has da capo. So that's one thing I want you to be sure to do, is to take into consideration something like a da capo, which is a performance direction, telling you to go back to the beginning, and then you repeat the first phrase. That's why the word fine is, is written there at the end of, of that first phrase. So that would be A repeated, and then A prime, and then A repeated. So that would be an example of a three-part period. So that one's a little bit more clear. Number 116, then, this is one that I would say, view this in four measure phrase lengths. That would give you then um, a combination of a four measure phrase and then a six measure phrase. <clears throat> and so this one would have the extension at the end because with the, you know, the third and fourth measure of, of the second phrase, you don't have a parallel, you know, you don't have a sequence, you don't have repetition, or you don't have a sequence of the rhythm. There's really not a reason to call that as being the extension, so you put the extension at the end. Um, again, I won't be grading you on like extensions, you know, where, where you place those, but you do have to be able to kind of figure it into the, the terminology that you use for these. So uh, that one, I would tend to um, call that a parallel period. Four measure phrase and then a six measure phrase. All right, and then number 174, that's a real clear contrasting period. So that one's very straightforward. 175 is in four measure phrases, and so that would be A, which is repeated, and then B, B prime, because the last measure is different from the last measure of the second phrase. Therefore, that would be a phrase group. 176, this one is tricky because the first and second ending don't, they're, they're used at the end of semi-phrases. So <clears throat> that first line is actually just a single phrase in length, but it kind of can trick you because of the use of first and second endings there. But um, so the first line is a phrase, the second line is a phrase, which is contrasted. So you have A, B, and then the last line is, is B prime. And so that is going to be a phrase group. And then the last one, 177, is a contrasting period. And um, again, this is one where yeah, that third phrase and the beginning of the first phrase, the, those first full measures are contrasting. So, um, yeah, that, that's what that would be, is, is a contrasting period. All right.